How old were you when you first started fishing, Billy? Nine years old. I've been at it ever since. Haven't lot missed a summer since I was nine years old. And you've seen some rough voyages too. Oh, well, I've seen a few. Not all. It's not all smooth sailing, but we got through anyway. Sometimes scared and sometimes not. So I imagine. <coughs> what? What? What do you like about it that kept you at it? Well, one thing. You was your own boss. Most of the times, if you went to Labrador and somebody else was scared, I don't know, it didn't seem like it. You was under another man like you are when you go to work on a construction job or something, but the biggest part of my time while well, I went off on my own, I had no one skiver over me. As far as I'm concerned, the fishery is out anyway, or a steam shore fishery. The failing now for the this last four years, and well, this year will be the worst. That's for me anyway, and I think for the most of the fishermen around there. Did you see it approaching? I mean, has it been rising? Yeah, well, you, I think we all saw this now for the last three or four years anyway. And time has come, well. We must get out. I got to get out anyway. Perhaps some, some of the crowd is going to hang on a while yet, but... Do you think the inshore fishermen got a square break? No, I don't, sir, think the inshore fishermen have got a square break. I don't think that there have been anything done for the inshore fishery yet. Clear of a few small boats like long liners. Bill. And, uh, Could anything have been done earlier? I think so. I don't know, but... I think if they'd uh, built some larger boats, like we were used to back 20 years ago, schooners, and uh, give it to someone, which uh, had employed about eight or ten men every summer, each boat, I think it's been a lot better than what so many of those long liners there, Bill. You tried to get one, didn't you? I tried to get a schooner, Fred, three or four, four or five years ago. I went in St. John's because I never had a down payment. They wouldn't even talk to me. They did talk, all right, but they told me that they couldn't do anything for me. So I just had to come home and go on the same way I was going before. Which I think, the day they gave me a boat five or six years ago, I wouldn't have to leave today. Which I'm going to leave now. What are you going to do? I'm going to leave and go to the mainland and try to see if I can earn a, a fair living anyway. What do you feel about pulling up? Pardon? What do you feel about pull, pulling up? What are your feelings about pulling up? Well, I don't want to do it. I mean, 25 years there now, and what I've got in 25 years there around me, well, so far as I'm concerned, it's only about the same as a pile of stuff you'd have in the garbage, yeah? Throw it. How much gear have you? Hmm, I don't know, Fred. I got two cod traps, ten gill nets, two boats and engines, and... Other equipment, that, well, hardly worth naming, I suppose. But it's all worth money. What do you think fish is so scarce as it is? You always did it well over the years? Yeah, well, What's I don't... in recent years? I don't know, Fred, but... The... So many boats, offshore boats anyway, they're dragging up the fish. I suppose the fish can't stand it anyway. They're they're over there from Russia and all the countries. One time, well, if they didn't, if the fish didn't come and swim in the card trap or you get them on a trawl, you didn't get them. But now they throw us down something, scoops of everything from the bottom. So fish can't stand that. 
I don't think he can. I might be one of the foolish ones, huh? But I don't think our government will get Dean Shore fishing a square deal. Sir. You're putting too much money in those big concerns, fish plants, and... You're not allowed to have a long liner build now without having a build in a certain place, is you? Perhaps I'm mistaken now, but I think you ought to have a built in a certain place. Well, that's too foolish as far as I'm concerned to talk about. You won't go to Buren? No, I won't go to Buren. If I got to leave where I'm fishing to now, leave me here, and I'm going to Buren, they're not going to drive me there. That's only, that's too foolish to talk about anyway. Leave one. What kind of dragger? No. No, I wouldn't work under someone else on a dragger. When I had my own fishing property. Get rid of that and go and fish on a dragger under someone else, no. After asking the government for a boat, they wouldn't recognize me, no. Well, Mr. Earl there knows that I was interested in that because I was talking to him about it. As far as I'm concerned, there's no work in Newfoundland anyway. Yeah. Few jobs. There's more Newfoundlanders to take them now and what there's jobs for the Newfoundlanders. Mr. Smallwood, when he went into government first, he was going to have two jobs for each Newfoundlander. There's ten Newfoundlanders for each job, now as far as I'm concerned. We got to go, because our gear that we're using now will soon be gone. I got cod traps there. I can't keep cod traps going on four or five candles of fish. You know that as well as I do. You was born in a fishing community anyway and and lived there. Up until the time you moved to the went to war, I suppose. But you you've heard of the re the resettlement uh benefits by, by leaving. Have you, are you going to apply for that? No, I'm not going to apply for no resettlement. You can't get it, can you? Not to move to the mainland. Why not move somewhere else in Newfoundland where you can use it? No, That's Fred, far. No, no, Freddie Fudd. They're paying uh, $6,000 for the move. It's better for them to take the $6,000 and buy a good, give it to someone to help to buy a good boat for to go to the Labrador fishery shop anywhere you can move from place to place to look for that fish. Instead of shifting them here, shifting them somewhere, and perhaps they end up out to feed them. Same thing as you've got to do around there. I don't, I don't see any point in that. You're not going to, to the mainland then to get money to come back? No, if I can get work, I'm staying to the mainland. Take me family. I'm moving myself and son is going first. And I'm open before too long. But in a month or a month and a half, I'll be able to get my family there. You would not come back. I won't come back if I can get it unless I'm forced back. Uh, we can't say we're not going to do something because we don't know what we got to do. That's something I wouldn't say that I'm going to leave change or I'll not come back anymore. That's too foolish to talk about anyway. I might have to come back. I might be glad to get back. But what can I do? I can't stay here. I raised part of my family here and well, I got through very good. But the uh, I got to get out now, it looks like. Can't do it any longer. The inshore fishery is gone. The false fishery failed on change oils about 15 years ago. Grabbed them in a false kitch, not for 15 years. And now the summer fishery, this last four years, is gone. So there's no fisherman can survive through that. <coughs> there might be a few. I'll stick it for a little while yet, but not too damn many. How did you decide on Toronto? Well, 
the the wife has a has a sister there and her husband which been gone 18 years and well I finally decided that I move somewhere to look for a job anyway oh, I guess that's how I come to decide to move I'll go off and I think I can get you work. heard from them yeah you? Yeah, so this is one of my old buddies anyway that I faced on the Larvador with. I'm not going to have much to say, just like the endorse what Mr. Crane said. Make the Larvador fishy is not finished yet. I've got a boat suitable. I think you would still get a living by that Larvador. And that's about all in the way of it. You think that you could get a living on the Labrador and maintain your own homes and families right here? Yeah, right here, right here, yeah. But it been pushed out. Yeah. Well, what I'd like to have if I was, I wouldn't like to have anything smaller than a one car around 400 drabs of fish. Take around five men. And... I think that if I had that today, powered like it is now with engines, I don't think I'd have any trouble to get a, fit, a living on the Labrador and feed my crowd and employ four more men there myself. Because when we were going to Labrador, we had to get a boat by sail and wait for the wind to carry us there. Which now don't matter too much, don't matter anything. He did not a time. We're sure to get there. Mr. Ludo knows that as well as I do. That we've been punished a lot of long hours. And uh, we've asleep lots of times, four hours, and got up and been further astern than when we started. What do you think will happen? I think eventually that she's going to die, so I suppose that that's what they're after anyway. They're after freezing us out. And uh, there's no fish, we got to get out, there's no work. They're not going to give us anything, not like boats. There might be a few long liners, anybody got money to put up, but I got no money to put up anyway. I'm just out of the picture, so I got to move out. You think no, this no. happened to many places in Newfoundland? Yeah, you this is not the only place. Fridge is going to happen to a lot more places. Clear this place. I don't know what full wild is going to do, but she might survive. I'm doubtful. She won't survive, not the way she is now, for sure. Perhaps the government will step in and do something there. I hope they do. And I hope to. The rest of the left hand eye on one had to move out. Why not move out and wishing that everybody will have to move out? Because I still like to change oils now as well as ever I did. When these fellows come back from Toronto, when you hear from them, what do they say about Newfoundland then? Well, <laughs> well they say they're proud they moved out, Fred. All effort that I've been talking to them that ever. There might be one or two come back. Well, they had a reason, perhaps, to call. But, uh, 90% say that they're glad they moved out. They won't come, they won't come back anymore. So, I'm going to try it now. See where I'm going to come back. I hope not. When I move, that's it. I want to say, just uh, I got to move with this anyway. You're going to move where you can work and that's earn right. a living. That's right. Or try to. You're not going to accept welfare. No. That's all I owe. I hope Mr. Small would wake up and see that he hasn't done too much yet for the inshore fishermen. Like I said, he could build a few long liners, but I don't think that's all the art to the fishery, the long liners. 
I think the day is coming when the ones that is 40 feet, 50 feet now, won't be any good. You'll want ones 100. All this, all of those long liners got to go out again yet. Something larger than that. I don't know what you think of it, Wes, but that's what I think. I think so too, yes. I go buy them two a penny by and by. Yeah. Later on. Well, all right, Freddy, if you put 40 long liners here and change oils, which they can't go off 100 mile, you know that. If they go off, they can, and there's any fish, they can only stay a night. They must come back. Well, you know as well as I do what fishing ground there is from Twillingate Long Point out to the Funks for 40 long liners around there. There's none, is there? Not for those many boats. Well, they got to go somewhere else to fish, to Labrador or somewhere. Well, if you haven't got it large enough for the salt you're catching for at least three weeks, it's not much good as far as I'm concerned. What do you think of it? Right. I think you're right there, yes. Okay, not, the, not the answer, not the Labrador fish.